uh, a little bit clinical thing, very briefly something about ischemic heart disease. Because myocardium utilizes lot of oxygen and it requires a constant supply of oxygen. If demand of oxygen is more and supply of oxygen is less, myocardium will is experience ischemia. In the myocardium, there should be perfect balance in oxygen demand and oxygen supply. You will study in about 9 videos about ischemic heart disease in detail in pathology. But here I will mention very briefly that ischemic heart disease is a group of diseases. It's not one disease. It's a group of syndromes, a group of clinical pathological conditions in which there is imbalance in oxygen supply and demand. The demand of oxygen may be more or supply of oxygen may be less or both problems may be there. You know major vessels which supply the blood to the myocardium are coronary vessels. So reduced oxygen supply may be due to the problems with the coronary vessels. Either coronary vessel is narrow due to atherosclerosis of the coronary artery. In coronary artery, in the intima of the coronary artery, there may be accumulation of fibro fatty plaques. Those fibro fatty plaques are called atheromatous lesions, right? So with the age, if atheromas are forming in your coronary artery and it may get narrow or there may be a platelet plug or even a big thrombus. So due to any reason, if blood flow through the coronary artery become less, right, myocardium will become ischemic or at the top, there's less blood flow, you have, you do exercise or there's tachycardia, demand of oxygen may be high. So whatever the mechanism, underlying mechanism, whenever there is imbalance between oxygen supply and demand, we say person is having ischemic heart disease. Now ischemic heart disease, ischemic heart disease has different clinical situations depending upon the severity of and duration of ischemia. For example, ischemia, have you heard of angina pectoris, myocardial infarction, sudden cardiac death, right? And chronic ischemic heart disease. Let me tell you, if someone develop acute ischemia, short, short duration ischemia and ischemia is for short time and it is ischemia is for short duration, right, then blood flow become okay, oxygen become okay and this is reversible and during that, during episode of ischemia, if myocardial cells have not died, so we call it reversible ischemia without myocardial necrosis. If there is reversible ischemia without myocardial necrosis which clinically come as chest pain that is called angina pectoris. What is angina pectoris? This is a situation where there is milder reversible ischemia without necrosis of myocardium. Is that right? Now that is called angina pectoris. Usually in angina pectoris there is central chest pain which is, yes, who will tell me the characteristics of angina pain? Classical, classical angina pain is that there is substernal or central chest pain which is dull, which is diffuse, right, which may be precipitated by exertion or emotional upset or by walking against cold wind or may be precipitated by heavy meals because heavy meal dilate the blood vessels to GIT. Blood will be stolen on that side. So if a coronary artery is narrow, further perfusion will be less and ischemia will come. Again, let's come back. What was angina pectoris? Classical angina pectoris. In classical angina pectoris, it's a clinical presentation. Underlying causes mild reversible ischemia to the myocardium. How patient clinically come? Patient come with central chest pain, which is dull, which is diffuse, diffuse means you cannot tell clearly where it is. Patient will say, I feel pain here. You say, put your finger here. He cannot put the finger. He says, somewhere here. But if you have a young man and he says, exactly I have a pain here, it is probably anxiety. Because anxiety pain, you can really pinpoint. But ischemic pain, you cannot pinpoint exactly. It's dull and diffuse in this area. And constricting in nature or griping in nature or a 
weight a sensation like weight on the chest dull diffuse constricting in nature or like a weight on the chest yes precipitated by exertion or emotional upset heart rate goes up emotion or walking against the wind or heavy meals or yes sex is a form of exertion i agree but it depends on if you are doing with your old wife for 30 year back you married maybe nothing happened <laughs> right maybe that was more good for you you were in general anyway that is one reason why you should be loyal okay with the time stress the heart is less right stress here is probably more anyway let's come back you are diverting me away so i'm talking about again you have to go back the central chest pain which is dull and diffuse and constricting. constricting in nature, weight like nature, and precipitated by exertion, exertion uh, physical exertion or emotional upsets, or walking against the wind. You know why walking against the cold wind constrict many vessels and heart find it difficult to pump against the narrow vessels of the skin. Work of the heart become more. So walking against the cold wind or after the heavy meals or and radiate to one arm which may radiate to one arm or to the both arm or to the neck or to the jaw or to the epigastrium or may not radiate at all or may be felt only in the area of radiation which is usually relieved by taking rest or by taking nitrates. Is that right? So underlying problem is there is transient ischemia of the myocardium right which is reversible myocardial infarction this is more severe this is severe and prolonged ischemia what is that severe and prolonged and some part of the myocardial dies so you call it myocardial ischemia in this case the pain is more severe more prolonged as compared to angina it has many the pain of myocardial infarction has many similarities with angina but there are few differences and doctors should know number one this pain is more severe Second, leads prolonged duration. Number three, it is not relieved by simply taking nitrates or not relieved by taking rest, right? And myocardial infarction pain is more associated with autonomic up upset because severe and prolonged pain so disturb your autonomic nervous system. You know, severe pain uh, disturb the hypothalamus and emotional reaction and autonomic upset. So there is usually tachycardia and tremors and sweating even in very cold weather, right? There is a saying that in a very cold weather, if you if a patient is coming to the emergency and sweating, there must be something very seriously wrong with the patient yeah. because usually you don't sweat in cold weather. It means there's severe autonomic upset. Probably there's something seriously wrong. So what really happens in myocardial infarction, there's severe autonomic upsets associated with severe and prolonged pain. What are the manifestation of autonomic upset? That there is tachycardia, there are palpitations and there's sweating even in, even in the cold weather, there are tremor and there's nausea or vomiting associated with it, right? But underlying problem is severe and prolonged ischemia which has led to death of some myocardial cell. In sudden cardiac death, probably ischemia in the heart may have precipitated severe tachyarrhythmias. Ischemia in the heart may be involving some part of the conduction system. And severe tachyarrhythmias, the ventricular tachy, uh, tachy uh, ventricular fibrillation may precipitate and that may kill the person very fast, right? Or a very large part of myocardial wall has undergone infarction. A very large part of the myocardium has undergone infarction, ventricle cannot contract and cardiogenic pump fail that may also if death occur within short time that is sudden cardiac death then we come to chronic ischemic heart disease these are all acute situation in chronic ischemic heart disease patient may have gone previously under repeated attacks of angina or mi and survived but most many part of the myocardium have been replaced by fibrotic mass you know when tissue is injured and dies it heals by fibrosis so when myocardial area inf undergoes infarction and repeated attacks of ischemia, then dead myocardial cell will be replaced by fibrotic tissue. And if 
ventricle has many fibrotic bands in its uh, wall, can it contract well? So heart will fail as a pump. So cardiac failure may be a manifestation of chronic ischemic heart disease. Right, that's all for today.